Hello there, Internet. Steve here with another asset, uh, sorry, Unity asset review. Um, today we are going to be looking at the Modular Medieval Village Mega Pack by 3D Shapes. At the time of recording this, this asset retails for uh, $64.99 USD, so $65 bucks, uh, USD. Um, it supports built-in, HDRP, and URP, all three out of the box. I am running this in built-in uh, for full transparency. So, let's talk about uh, the quality first. Quality is high, as you'll see when I pop in there, even, even running it on built-in, the um, quality is incredibly good. Um, but we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit more. Um, I did have to... So, uh, well, I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, modularity and workability, this is a high modular pack, so it for sure passes on that as well. Um, it's, it's deeply modular, which I like to see. So yeah, definitely passes. Uh, support and serviceability. Um, the developer, as far as I, I didn't have to reach out to them, but as far as I can tell, they are active on both responding to requests and also fixing problems. Um, there's a couple of people who had a problem with one of the previous updates and they informed the asset maker and it was fixed like in relatively short order. So this definitely passes on support and serviceability and then value. Uh, for 65 bucks, I do think it's worth it, especially because the developer seems to be adding stuff to it over time. Uh, and like most single entity assets you purchase on the asset store, once you buy it, um, you are entitled to upgrades for life, essentially. Um, so that doesn't seem to have changed ever. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do think that the value is there. I think that it is an incredibly robust pack for what it is. And I think that the price is, is very low, all things considered. So without further ado, let's hop in here to the actual asset. Um, this asset, did not have a standard, um, like a standard demo scene, like with a pre-built village. So, but they did put the buildings that are prefabs into one demo scene. Um, all of these are made for modular pieces, which I'll, I'll show in a little bit. But um, all I did is I just put a plane down in this scene to make it, uh, to make it explorable. So that's why that plane doesn't look that good because I really didn't care to put a texture on it or anything. So we're just going to do a run through of the buildings that are pre-made. That was weird. Um, so there are upstairs to all of these. This um, windmill has four levels. I'm not going to go up all four levels. Um, but I will go up maybe one here, just so you can see. But definitely has multiple levels, which is nice. So as you can see, I mean, even when you zoom in on built-in, the quality is actually decent on these. Um, you know, some stuff like, eh, lava, meh. But all in all, again, even on built-in, these are good quality prefabs. Um, so the quality is definitely there. Got some ingots, um, ingots, however you say it. So... Upstairs is stable here. Again, upstairs, I'm not going to, I don't think I can, oh, I can do this though. Watch me break it and not be able to get back. Uh, so I've got kind of like an in here. Tavern in (laughs) 
So even the detail on these, you know, you can actually read what it says. I mean, it's a little bit difficult. Macabre Hammond is the fa or the famous spirit medium. So yeah, I mean, you can like the fact that the fact that this is on built in uh, and you can still read that pretty clearly is nice. Um, so we'll upstairs to it, a little outdoor patio, quote unquote. Um, You know what? I didn't open that door. Oh well. There's something in there too. Everything has an interior. So all of these set pieces, all these set pieces definitely have interiors. Um, or you, sorry, rather you can make interior, rather you can make interiors with them. Um, so that's nice. Ugh. Don't punch there. It's annoying. Um, <laughs> so this one is like if you needed a foundation for the building because that is there's nothing in there that's just empty get out of the stupid door. so there are variants in the walls as well and when we go into the manifest scene we'll dive into that but you can see that there's a few different types of walls that we've seen already. There's this thatch type and then an unthatch type and they've got stone types as well. Um, Alright, so Go to play mode. Uh, so I do this real, oop, this real quick. See, so it's supposed to be the in portion of it, um, and even this stuff like this, oh, stuff like this. We got so the chests and stuff are usable as well, which is nice to see. Um, so uh, I was going to point out one other thing. What was the other thing I was going to point out? Don't actually remember. So uh, that's the quick run through of that scene. Let's. Oh, I was gonna point out this. So this is like, yeah, it's like if there's a foundation, if you need a, just a foundation or a raised building, that's where something like that would come into play. Um, yeah. So even the crates have interior, so you could use some sort of um, destruction script or something if you wanted to to you know, take that apart, because it's not, obviously, it's not, like, each part, each side is an individual, um, but it does have an interior. It's not just a single-faced prefab. So, <coughs> let's go to the asset manifest real quick, or not real quick. This is where the bulk of it's going to be, because um, as you can see, there is a lot. So, uh, over here, we've got a bunch of stuff for like a tomb. I think that there, I, I, I don't want to be quoted on this because I don't, I don't know for sure. But it seems like, from what I've seen, the developer of this asset is adding in in this area. Um, so what I will say, because the, the one complaint I guess I have is that these um, mausoleums are single-faced. I would have liked to have seen these multi-faced or you know having interiors or even just give us the pieces to build our own um but that's something that is unfortunately uh you know not not a thing right now but like i said i do think like oops the developer seems to be adding on to this section so i think maybe we'll see some some future additions there i hope I hope. I mean, again, I'm not, I don't have inside information into what this developer is doing, but it would be nice to see that. So, Dev, if you're listening, please. <laughs> um, so, let's hop over here. We have, uh, start over here. We've got a bunch of roofing. So, I, I do like to see 
this type of approach, this hyper modularized approach to everything that they're doing. And we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some of that down the road more or down as we head, as we go down the actual list here. But all of these siding or, you know, roof siding pieces and the variants of them, as you can see, are really, really nice to see. Um, as a level designer, I really like to see that um, because that gives me a hell of a lot more flexibility to be able to make really unique looking levels with a minimal amount of uh, pieces. Um, so you have a bunch of different options here for different, you know, flat sides, angled sides, um, just actual uh, cistern type. Um, again, like I said, there's different variants. So I think there's three different roof variants in here, if, I'm, if memory serves. Yeah, so you got like a traditional, you've got a more like aqua, like aqueduct or clay, and then sort of a dilapidated um, version of it. Um, and you can break those materials out as well if you really need to. So, um, and yeah, so you've got cross cross beam portions of it, of that ceiling piece. Um, you have three sided. You have ang more angled, different angle variants, high angle and low angle, again with multiple material variants, all really, really good to see. I, I really like seeing all of that because, again, it gives you a lot more flexibility as a level designer. So um, most of this stuff is for the, um, um, for the mill or mills rather, windmill, grain mill, st and stuff like that. Um, you can use this for other buildings, but there are a couple of different stairwell options. Um, we'll get to some of those in a little bit. Uh, so these weren't really used in the demo scene, but you have sort of graded fe or, uh, uh, doored fencing and the posts to line that fencing up. So that's really nice. Excuse me, a couple of different types of railings, so a nicer railing and a poor railing. Um, more stairs, foundations, again, I really like to see foundations. So seeing this stuff is really nice because it gives you more flexibility when you're building out your levels. Um, then we get into sort of the, the edging and, and stuff like that. So the way that they broke these up, I, I do like. Uh, they give you angles. They give you a couple of different options for angles, but then they give you the individuals as well. So these can be used as, or really should be used as, um, so you would do kind of like, like this. If you were going to use this on the outside, um, yeah. so you would kind of put it like that as sort of a awning, as, as sort of an awning solution, you know. Whatever you, you get the idea, but that's sort of an awning option uh, to put off of the that, you know, edging around. Um, a few different options for those long and short. As I've said in previous videos, I do like to see this as well because it gives me the option to batch things out if I'm feeling lazy. Um, a bunch of different window options. So, uh, and and these windows. Uh, can be used to replace these as well. The way that the developer modularized these out, you can replace pretty much any window with any window, which is nice. So they give you the options. Um, they give you these options for, uh, they're somewhere over here, but we'll get to those in a little bit. Um, so more of the roofing windows. So these are where you would put, uh, you would sort of put in with like, uh, duh, 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 with, well, you put it in with these sorts of things, but I don't see the specific one that you would use. Um, here you go. You'd, you'd use it with these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Or use them with these guys uh, to sort of make that angled, um, like slot those angled pieces in there. So you got a couple of those double and single windows, and then you've got... Uh, ones that you would put against a flat wall um, for more, you know, character or more 
uh, uh, diversity in your level build. So here's more windows. Again, those fit right in there. I like to see these ones because <laughs> if you notice, these ones are fro these ones are all frosted out. So the ability to have windows that you can have have the player be able to look out, that's also nice. Uh, a couple of different floor options. Um, I, I don't see a need for more than these floor options, if I'm being honest. Um, I would I would like to see uh, angle piece like this for this texture, but that's easy to rectify on your own as well. Um, but if we're just talking out of the box and really nitpicking, that would have been nice. Uh, a couple different door options for the single doors, so that's nice. Uh, now we're getting into those bay windows. So I, I'm not going to go down every single one of these variants, because uh, as you can see, there are a shit ton of them. I'm going to point out sort of the big ones, and then we'll go to the back, because there's a lot of clutter to go over, too. You know how much I love my clutter. So they have preset variants with the thatching, uh, stone, and then non-thatched um, for pretty much all of these options. So you've got bay windows, open bay windows, so you can put whatever you want in there. Um, small windows, small open windows, half bays. Um, regular size windows for, again, pretty much all of the variants. Like I said, I'm not going to go down every one of these because this will this would be an hour-long video then, and I, I respect your guys' time, so I'm not going to do that. But then you've got, um, so you've got half, uh, half walls, uh, the half walls that are non-thatched and full walls that are non-thatched. Um, so if you see, and then you've got, Full, full walls that have a window and a door, and then ones that just have windows, and then down there somewhere, ones that have no windows. So if you watch my previous videos, you know that I like to see this because this gives you more flexibility when you're designing a level. It gives you the ability to make more unique buildings that way. Um, so I do think that that is really, really good to see. Um, so more doors, more doors, more halves more door and window combos at this point they're pretty much just giving you like the options with all of the doors and all of the windows which is again why i'm not going to go down every single one of them here we go so you've got angles as well angled walls as well so um i like to see this for i think obvious reasons but if it's not obvious because this allows you to really um create better uh better buildings better diversity in your buildings. Um, you can do this with like the halves over here, but honestly having these corners just makes it easier to rapidly build out levels. And especially if you're gonna use any sort of um, AI and uh, procedural generation in your level building, you kind of need those corners then because AI doesn't really do a good job of building corners. <laughs> Uh, based off of, uh, you know, flat static pieces. So going down here, again, more variants, more variants. You have s slightly smaller angles. Um, so, and then we've got, so here's some of those um, um, uh, roof pieces, the roof ends as well. So you've got some, some more edges, some more edging or, you know, specifically, you know, bases of buildings. Then you've got some, some exterior stone stairs. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go through all of these because you've got thatched. Um, or sorry, you have unthatched, you have stone, you have thatched, and then you have thatched stone. Um, again, I'm not going to go through all that. Just I'll do a quick fly, actually, I'll do a quick flyby of these ones where you can see that they're pretty much all the same thing, just different variants. Um, so here you've got a couple of round windows that are thatched and then stone thatched. Um, so that's nice to see. Uh, these are frosted though, as you can see, so you're not going to be able to let the player see out of those. Now we've got some awnings. So <clears throat> um, it would have been nice to have a, few, a little bit more of a variant with the awnings, but honestly, Flop, uh, flopping, swapping out those textures or materials, not the big of a deal for something of your own. And on top of that, um, I, you know, that's me nitpicking. I think that the amount of awnings you get with this, like those awnings are perfectly fine. 
So, we got a lot of blacksmith gear. Um, you know, the forge, anvil, grinder, sharpener, you know, the bellows, all that fun stuff. Um, got weapon rack and a couple of weapons here. There's even more weapons down at the end that we'll get into. Um, but there is a decent amount of blacksmith stuff here. So we have a bunch of torch options, large torches, torches on a pole, wall torches, etc. Same thing with a couple of lanterns, um, lots of logs uh, and stuff like that. Um, a decent amount of rugs, in my opinion. Um, you know, poor rugs and then king, you know, rugs or duke rugs, whatever. Got one chandelier. Um, you know, that's fine, honestly. Uh, I like my clutter and I like variant and clutter. It would be nice to have more, but eh, whatever. Decent amount of candlesticks and candlestick holders and just candle holders in general. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So that's a decent amount of um, um, variant. So we got a barrel that the lid is removable, which is nice. Another weapon rack, a couple of hay bales, and then there's a bunch of food. So we are going to, uh, there's more food, a lot more food down there, but you got, you know, a hog with some, um, with some uh, uh, fixings, I guess, for the and then you have a hog on its own. Um, I don't know, I think this is supposed to be, oh, don't, I think this is supposed to be like a bird nest or something or a birdhouse, I'm not really sure. Uh, book stand it says book. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you put the book on the end. That makes sense. Uh, ropes. So again, more clutter. Um, decent uh, fire pit. Uh, decent amount of tables. It's four four table variants. Um, signs for the different types of shops and stuff. This is really nice, and I like to see it where it's images. <laughs> because that removes the need for localization. Um, localization is a, is a bitch if you've ever had to deal with that. And, um, you know, picture speaks a thousand words, right? So I actually think that's a smart way to do it because pretty much any fantasy game, if you see an anvil on a sign, you know, oh, that's probably the blacksmith. You see a potion on a sign, oh, that's probably the alchemist. So I think that's a smart way to go about it. Oop. So here's some other variants for the blacksmith, um, just different options. Uh, chains, which I like to see because that gives the ability to really do a lot of clutter. You've got the um, tools that you need for the blacksmithing, and then you've got you know good old uh, bars, which is nice. Horseshoe <laughs> as an individual piece, which is cool. Few different bookshelf options um, and just shelving options in general. Uh, yeah, we'll do this. More tools, which again, nice to see. Lots of individual books, which again, like that is really nice to see because it allows you to really make your your level like unique and uh, it's not just a wall of books. Now the other problem is with this is then you run into the problem of your the more prefabs, individual prefabs you have in your scene, the less optimization you have, but you can get around that with, with, with tools. So uh, that's just know if you're going to do it that way and put a bunch of books in the bookshelf that are each individually interactable to, to, to do optimization for your build. Papers, uh, parcels, all really nice to see. Um, scrolls, jugs, again, like this has a lot of good clutter. Uh, vases, pitchers and stuff like that, baskets. Uh, on the back end here you have a coat rack and a couple of wall rack things, wall mound things. Um, alchemy tools, so mortar and pestle, um, cooking shit, oops, uh, you know, tankards and stuff like that, plates all for the inn. A lot, like I mentioned, a lot of different food options. Um, so and sacks of food and stuff. Um, so the sacks are also individual. Again, more food, prepared food, 
prepared food. I don't think, yeah, these are not broken down. So these are, these dishes are how they are. Um, so a lot, like, like I said, lot of food options. Um, and all of these crates and all are all, um, you know, multi-purposed. So you got a lot of storage um, vessels, which is nice to see. And a rotten one. And that one almost looks rotten, doesn't it? That one's a rotten one. <laughs> so there's a couple of rotten fruit variants too. Um, coin purses. Uh, again, more vessels, a bunch of broken crap, banana peels, gotta have banana peels. Like I said before, there's a ton of weapons and stuff down here. So you have a lot of stuff to clutter up the blacksmith, uh, the blacksmith's uh, shop. You can also make your own spear variants, which is nice with the short and long poles and the heads. So that's really nice to see. I don't think, yeah, the axe heads are not modularized. Um, that's all right though. Let's hop back down here. So we covered the pieces there. We have a couple of different sitting options. Kind of wish there were more of those, but just because of the wide breadth of stuff. But you know, a couple chairs, a couple stools, a couple of bed options, um, dressers, which is nice with the uh, you know storage stuff. Um, this one have yeah, that one does have storage too. And then a loom, you know, because you need a loom. <laughs> um, and then back here, so we talked about the signs. We kind of looked at all of these on the uh, bulletin board, but they are all individual, so that's nice. Um, you could you can make your own, you know, materials for it for the actual text, so that's easy enough to do. There's that bulletin board that was in there. There's another bulletin board, an outside standing board. It's like a bounty board. Um, Buckets, uh, three of them, yeah, three buckets. Padlock is individual, so that makes, you know, locking doors and making those interactables or locking chests, making those interactable, that makes that easier. Uh, you know, tankard barrel, fireplace stuff, trap door, um, or sorry, chest, chest lid that could be also be used as a trap door. Um, remember I popped all these off, so these are all, these all have interiors, so they're usable from that end of things. A um, couple of, you know, trough, some more storage vessels, the crates, again, these, this had an interior, but there's no way to access the interior <laughs> without going and actually doing, um, without like using a, a, a tool to, or, you know, well, without building, without writing a script to have it be able to be broken down in real time. Um, and then a cart. So a lot of stuff. And like I said, the developer has added to this over time. I don't know how much more they're going to add, but it has been updated and stuff has been added. So, you know, even that aside, if that weren't the case, I would still say this is a worthwhile asset um, and definitely worth the purchase if you're making a medieval game. Um, but with the addition of the of the developer adding stuff, uh, you know, to it, I 100% recommend this as a medieval, um, as a medieval, uh, uh, you know, village pack. Um, so many different prefabs, so many different options, uh, highly modularized in smart ways. I I do recommend this asset. So. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have this asset and you have a different opinion, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, hope you like this one, and I will see everybody in the next one.